Hello and welcome. This video is brought to you by the streamingadvisor.com. Tailored your entertainment with streaming. What we're going to talk about in this video is a new app from Plex. This is called Plex for HTPCs. What it's meant to do is turn your computer into a TV media player. And it's actually kind of a throwback to when Plex first got started a long time ago. It's set up so that you can use a computer the same way that you would something like a Roku or another media device. People who want to use HTPCs are people who want to be able to access lots and lots of different media servers. Maybe they want to display their things in a certain way. Maybe they're gamers that want to have a gaming PC hooked up directly to their TV and also use it for videos and other things. So you go to Plex, you know, the Plex website, and you just want to pay attention to the, the fact that there are different kinds of downloads. And what you want to look for here is Plex for desktop. We happen to be doing this on a Mac computer, so your choices are going to be for Mac on this one. If you're doing it on a Windows computer, your computer will display Windows options. But, want to make note, there is Plex for Mac and Plex for HTPC. And you can see that it notes that's home theater PCs. Now, both of these programs will work on your computer, but the key is how it's set up. And we're going to show you sort of the differences between Plex for HTPC and a Plex meant for your actual just computer desktop. So, in my applications, you'll see that I have the two different Plex apps and even the Plex media server, which is not relevant to this conversation. What we're going to show you first is the Plex app for PC. This is just the regular Plex app for your desktop environment. You'll see that it's got the familiar Plex layout. And you'll notice you know, the little hand, the little pointer. This is operated, essentially, we're exploring this with the mouse, which is, of course, what you do with a normal computer program. You'll, you should note that as you scroll over things, it highlights. It goes from like light gray to white. It's not an incredible contrast, but there, that is you know, how you denote what menu you're in. You see that it's got the live TV. This, this is just like what you see now on connected TV devices. But the note that I want you to pay attention to is the sort of like the font size. It's a little different. And the way that things are highlighted is according to the mouse. With the PC and Mac just computer app, it gives you some different sorts of options in that when you go into the discovery, you can click on the services. Like you saw, we clicked on Peacock, and that's going to open Peacock's website because this is a simple, it's basically a little website on top of everything else. The actual Plex app works the same way. You know, that, that was using the web app, but now we're in the regular Plex app for my Mac. And again, it's the same menu. It reacts the same way. It's using a mouse. And again, the fonts aren't very large. Like if you're watching this on your TV, you probably can't see the little white lettering as well as you could if you were sitting directly in front of it on a computer. So now we're going to jump into Plex for HTPC. The home theater PC. Now, if you don't want to use a home theater PC, I mean, that's, you know, that's up to you. But there are some advantages to doing that. There always have been because you get more web content easily without having to do any extra 
tricky things because you know you have every browser to your disposal. But here we are. See, and, and you should note immediately, you see how there's a highlight now? It looks like Roku or, you know, a Fire TV or something like that. Big block, you can tell exactly where you are, and you'll notice there's no mouse scrolling around. That's because you can use a keyboard or even a USB-based remote on this. Something like something that you would use on an Android device or something like that. You can have a remote with a keyboard, you can have a remote with a, with a mouse option, but what we're doing here is bouncing around with up and down arrows. You'll see that in the live TV section, you see the fonts are much larger, much wider, because this is using the sort of engine that you would see on something like a Roku or a Fire TV or Chromecast. It's meant for viewing on a TV, that what they call that, that 10-foot experience. You're sitting on your couch watching a large screen. You're not sitting at a desk or you know, using a computer on a laptop or you know, even an iPad or something like that. But it's got all of the same things. There are some different features, though. And that's where you're going to find things like launching. The launching works differently. There is no way to launch directly from the app. You see what it does instead? It shows you where you can find it. And that, that's, that's working kind of like what you find in the Roku app. Some things, the Apple TV, for instance, and the Android TV will launch directly in. But on this one, you discover, allows you to see where you can watch it, and then it's up to you to go to it. But of course, you know, if something that people might like is if they you know, download content from you know, their, their provider or something like that, it's going to save it directly to your computer, and then you can access it. Again, the mechanics, mechanical differences, you exit the system by pressing you know, back or going into settings and going to exit. That's, again, much more like a TV app and less like a computer program. You'll see that the search has a search box that's built around a controller. So you can, you know, click, or click away, you know, using your arrows, or you could still use a keyboard. If you have a wireless keyboard or, like I said, a keyboard that's built into your controller, you can still use that for searching. But we'll show you again. You know, you can find all the content, you still have all of the information. It just doesn't allow you to launch, say, the Batman the Animated Series and then jump into HBO Max the way that the regular PC app does. I guess technically you could use that regular PC app with a remote controller, but this is set up much more for that experience. If you're an old Plex user, you'll be seeing, you might even think, well, that's just the Plex media player. That's, you know, that's the old Plex, the old Plex app. And it's not. It, this is, this one's more built from the ground up to work in the new things. That old app didn't have the discoverability and things like that. But it isn't unsimilar in any way. So that is the Plex HTPC app as compared to Plex on the web and the you know the Plex app for Mac and PC. I think that it's exciting to see them move in this direction. It's it's kind of a like I said while it feels a little retro, there are still lots of people out there who want PCs attached to the TV, especially gamers, like I said. A gamer, for gamers, it's really important to have that processing power and things like that that they can build right into their system without having to worry about buying a brand new system. You get a new, get a new graphics card, get a new anything. But people like that also enjoy watching TV and programs like this are built for them 
And you know, if you've never hooked a computer up to your TV, give it a shot. Things like the Mac Mini are almost look like they're made for something like that. And you might discover a whole new way of enjoying content. But that's that. That is it for us on that video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. And as always, I'm Ryan Downey, the Streaming Advisor. Stream on, my friends.